Let's do one more of these. Find volume of the solid form by revolving the region bounded by the graphs of y equals x squared plus 1, y equals 0, x equals 0, and x equals 1. <gasps> about the y-axis. So let's try to make sense of this by drawing a graph of all of these functions. Okay, so I've got, I'm going around the y-axis. I want to make sure that I have enough room around the y-axis. Yep, okay, and uh, probably not enough space over here. Let's see, okay, that's good. And our graph is mm, x squared plus 1, so it's a parabola up 1. We're going to say that this is what we're just going to draw it kind of large. Oh, now that is a marvelous looking parabola. Uh, TI 84's got nothing on me. Anyway, uh, let's see what else we've got. We've got y equals 0. That's the x axis. x equals 0 is the y axis. And x equals 1. So here, let's. Uh, I guess gray, we'll go gray. So we'll say that that is the same distance, x equals one, like right about there. All right, so here's our region. And we're gonna revolve that thing around the y-axis. And there's gonna be a complication here, a slight complication. So let's say, for example, that I, I sketch in my little representative rectangle here. I'm just going to put it like right here. Da, 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 da. Right? And here, since we are revolving this thing across the y axis or around the y axis, our rectangle is perpendicular to the y axis. And then I'm, I'm going to integrate with a, a respect to a change in y. That's right here. So, change in y. So, imagine this rectangle here. If I scooch this thing down, down here at the bottom, it's constant, right? It is absolutely constant. This would just make, if I break this up right here, this region is just going to make a cylinder that's down here at the bottom. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break this up into two different pieces. I'm not even going to do calculus on this bottom part that's right here. So if I were to evolve, revolve this bottom rectangle around the y-axis, it just makes a cylinder that I can geometrically find the, the volume of. But this one is variable up here beyond, um, what is this, y is equal to, to 1. That's right there. All right, so I'll do this in, in two different pieces. And so why don't I, while I are already have the ability to do so, find the volume of this bottom piece that's down here. So when I revolve this thing around, its radius, its radius here, it's going to be a radius of 1. And its height is also going to be 1. So it's pi times 1 squared times the height of 1. It's just pi. So the volume of the cylinder that's down here at the base here, that's just 1. And it's done. Now I have to worry about this kind of top piece that's going to be over here. So I will kind of sketch what that disk is going to look like. It's actually a washer, right? It's a washer because we have this space that's right over here. So let's draw what that washer is going to look like. Uh, what color? Oh, yeah, it's just red. Right. So just right over here. Dumb. Da dum da dum. Boop. Boop. Huh? Is that perfect or what? All right. And then as far as the rectangle goes, the rectangle that I'm revolving around is this guy that's right here. So imagine, if you will, that it's this piece that's revolving around the y-axis. Okay, and as we've already discussed, its height is going to be a delta y. And then we need two pieces of information here. Let me draw in my axis. Like so. I need two radii. Let's do an outer radius and an inner radius. Let's do this outer radius first. So this outer radius is the distance, again, I'll draw it over here as well, from the y-axis um, to that far right-hand side. And that is a constant value of just 1, right? That's the number 1 that's right there. x is equal to 1. So it's just 1. That's done. Why? Why is it green? Why? Why? 1. There we go. 
All right, now my inner radius, on the other hand, that is the one that's going to change here. That's the variable one. I didn't put one there. And this one is the distance from the y-axis, from the y-axis to uh, the, the parabola that's right there. So as we've seen before, that whenever we're integrating with respect to y, when we have ourselves a horizontal rectangle here, this is a, a change in x, which represents the this radius that's right here, this change in x, which means that we're going to have to take this function. Oh, I guess I'll do it in green y equals x squared, and then I'm going to have to, no, that is not correct, it's plus 1. There we go. We'll have to, <laughs> now it's plus 1. We'll have to solve that thing for x. So I'll subtract over the y, 1, and then take the square root. So y minus 1, it's plus or minus the square root of that for x, but we'd have a a positive square root for the right half and a negative one for the left half. I don't need the negative one, so we'll just use this positive piece that's right there. Okay, so that's this inner radius, square root of y minus one. All right then, we are ready to find the volume of the washer. I'm going to switch the width. There we go. So that volume is equal to, let's go ahead and add the pi in right up, up front here for the bottom piece. So pi plus, just so I don't forget it, definite integral from, I need to go from 1 to, hmm, whatever this number is, I wonder if it's 2, from 1 to, let's see, how would I find it? I would put in Let's see, it was x is equal to, oops, x is equal to 1 in here. Obviously, it would be 2, right? 1 squared plus 1, 2. To 2 of outer radius squared, so it's 1 squared, minus the inner radius squared, which is the square root of y minus 1, yeah, squared, and then dy. Carry this stuff down. And then let's go ahead and integrate. Actually, let's uh, clean this thing up just a little bit first. One to two, that's gonna be just a one minus parentheses, just y minus one whenever I square that guy, dy. Let's uh, uh, distribute our negative through here. So it'd be a negative y plus one, which is gonna add up with the other one that I have there. Two minus y, wow problem turned out to be really easy when all was said and done. Okay, let's go ahead and integrate 2y minus y squared over 2 from 1 to 2. And then, of course, we will have to plug the 1 in there, unlike the zeros. Okay, plugging in 2, I'd have 4 minus 2 squared is 4. 4 divided by 2 is a 2 minus parentheses, a 2 minus a half. Safe stop. Let's just keep going. Let's challenge ourselves. All right, inside the parentheses here, or inside the brackets, let's get rid of these and change that to a plus. There we go. And then I would have, oh, basically these cancel out, right? Because that's negative 4 minus this 4. It's gone. I just have a half. I got pi plus a half a pi which makes 3 pi over 2. Uh, let's go ahead and throw some units on there. Okay, there you go. Our final solid of evolution based on, well, both a disk method, honestly, because this bottom one is a disk method. Could you have integrated this thing, done it with calculus? Of course you could have, but you know, it was far faster to just recognize that one as just being a, a cylinder that we can geometrically find the volume of, and then we had a a washer right up here. Let's take a look at what some of these pictures look like. So here's the official picture of that region that we just rotated around. And notice that they did also break it up right there at y is equal to 1 as doing this uh, a cylinder that's down there at the bottom and then that washer that's up at the top. What does this whole thing that's look like? Okay, there you go. So it's sort of like, I'm going to say it's like a Dumbledore's pensive if you remember that from Harry Potter, right, where, you know, you can see all those little 
memory visions and stuff. Yeah. Okay, that's um, that'll do this first objective about finding the volume of a solid revolution using disks and washers. Coming up on objective two, where we kind of generalize this for finding volumes of solids with known cross sections.